Hey everyone, so there still seems to be a lot of confusion around neighborhoods and what happens when they expire. I keep seeing comments about that, so I thought today I will make a video explaining what happens when your neighborhood expires and answer some of the most common questions around it. And I will also tell you a little bit more about neighborhoods at the end of this video. So the first question I see a lot is, is there an automatic payment? And should I cancel my neighborhood somewhere if I don't want to automatically pay for the next month? So the answer to that is very easy. No, there is not an automatic payment. Once your neighborhood expires, you will not be charged any Robux unless you choose to pay longer for it. It doesn't work like a VIP server on Roblox where if you get a VIP server for a game that it automatically charges you every month and it's very hard to see which you are still paying for. With Bloxburg, it's a little bit different because it's in the game. So there is no automatic payment. You don't need to worry about a subscription or anything. It will end automatically. And and then moving on to the second question, linking to the automatic payment, what happens when it expires if I stop paying for a bit? For example, you're playing Bloxburg for a long time and you're like, okay, I need a break and your break is longer than expected. For example, half a year or something like that. Do I need to keep paying for my neighborhood to keep everything in settings and stuff like that. The answer to that is no, you don't need to keep paying for your neighborhood. If you want to end it, just let it run out, let it run its course. Your settings will be saved. So if you again, like let's say you took six months of a break, after those six months, you wanna come back and you're like, you know what, I kinda want a neighborhood again. Your settings will be saved, your like blacklist and stuff like that is saved as well. So it doesn't like get removed as soon as your neighborhood expires. So you don't need to worry about that as well. And talking about those settings, that brings me to number three. So in the end, you keep your settings. If you blocked someone from your neighborhood, they will still be blocked once you start paying again for it. So it's very easy to just get back to it. And then a somewhat strange question, but I also get where it's coming from. And that is what happens if you try to join a neighborhood that was expired? Some people think they will get banned for trying to join an expired neighborhood. That is not the case. The only thing that will happen is it won't teleport you and it will give you a message that the neighborhood is expired and that you cannot join it anymore. So don't worry about getting banned for that. Don't worry about anything else. If you try to join it, you will just get a little error message. It will send you back to a public server and that's it. Then we move on to extra things that you can do in your neighborhood. For example, one of those things is changing the color of your grass. So when I do videos, I do get a lot of questions, especially like at the beginning of January when everyone was still like mainly in the snow and I was at the normal grass. That's because in your neighborhood, you can actually change the color of your grass. So if you want Pink grass, for example, you can change that as well. The tree colors match. So if you want to have a blue grass, you will have blue trees in your neighborhood as well. Whatever you decide, you can do in that. You can also add your own RGB code so you're not stuck to the colors that you get in that little menu. And then something else you can do in your neighborhood. However, you need to be on a computer for that, or at least, I don't know actually if that would work. If you connect a keyboard to your mobile device, I don't know if it would actually work with the shortcuts. I don't think it will. But if you are on computer, you can press shift and P and it will open the free fly camera so that you can fly around the map and actually go into people's houses and stuff like that. It's quite funny to do. And then something else you can do is allow more than 12 people to join on your neighborhood. For example, if you want to role play with a huge family, you have the uncles, you have the nieces, you have brothers and sisters and granddaughters and grandchildren, stuff like that. You can make 50 people join in your neighborhood. You can, however, only load in 12 houses because there's only only 12 free plots, but you can make 50 people join into your neighborhood. So if you want a huge role play or whatever, you can make them join, load in a few houses of some people and then play in those houses. I think that's a really cool thing as well. So anyways, I hope that cleared some things up for when it comes to neighborhoods, because I know it's a little bit confusing if you're not really into that space. Like if you just play Bloxburg now and then, and then you leave for a few months, I get it can be a little confusing and uh, yeah, it's, it's sometimes hard to get back into it. So anyways, going to leave it at that. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe.